everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. And my name is Vibha Bhatia, and I work with the AgroVision Foundation team. And I'm excited to be hosting this session today. This informative webinar is organized by AgroVision Foundation and AgroSpectrum. So, as we all know, on the 5th of June 2020, the Indian government promulgated three ordinances that give farmers a new approach to the produce. It is said that these ordinances have the potential to change the contour of farm today and can expand the reach of the farmers to consumers directly. These changes will effectively make India a one nation, one market, and is likely to have an impact on the country's health. One section considers the agriculture reform as a historic and landmark and express confidence that the reform could empower the farmer and transform the agriculture into profitable and vibrant activity. A move for the upliftment of farmers is seeking to break the shackles of poverty and middlemen. However, there is another section who fear that these reforms might sound the death of need for MSP subsidies by moving out or direct sales of it. The session would involve deliberation from both the perspectives to reach a meaningful conclusion. Now, second part of my uh, welcome is about the food. Food is the starting point of our energy, our health, and our well being. Today is World Food Day. And in principle, which World Food Day celebrates is a furtherance of food security all over the world, especially in times of crisis. As countries deal with, deal with widespread effect of COVID-19 pandemic, World Food Day 2020 has highlighted how food and agriculture are an essential part of the COVID-19 response. On this day, we celebrate the people who produce, plant, harvest, fish, or transport our food and call on the public. Thank these food heroes who, no, ma who, no matter what the circumstances are, continue to provide food to these communities and beyond. They're helping us to grow, nourish, and in our world. So before we get started, there's a little announcement. E-certificates are available, so you're all requested to write to us on AgroVision email ID. And uh, so please attend the complete session in order to be qualified for the E-certificate. And if you have any questions during the session, please type them into the question box. And we will be asking you questions at the end of the session. And uh, now I would like to kick this off by welcoming our exhibition team. We have uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. C.D. Mai, uh, he's the chairman of AgroVision Advisory Committee. Mr. Ravi Boradkar, he's president of AgroVision Foundation and publisher of AgroSpectrum and New Food Spectrum. And we have distinct panel to discuss this watershed moment in Indian agriculture. So without any further delay, I would like to welcome our distinguished speakers. We have with us today Dr. A.K. Singh, he's DDG Agriculture Extension CAR. Dr. Neelam Patel, Senior Advisor, Agriculture Navy IO, Mr. Anil Ghanwat, President of Sari Sangatan, Mr. Harish Damodaran, Digital Affairs and Agriculture Editor, The Indian Express, and Dr. Bhagirat Chaudhary, is the Founder Director of Agriculture Biotechnology Center. So now I would like to request Dr. C.T. Mai for his opening remarks. Dr. Mai? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Mai? Uh, I think, are you able to hear now? Because I can hear you. Okay. okay. So first of all, let me uh, thank all these speakers who have all the way come for our webinar of the farm bills. Uh, in fact, today uh, is the world day, and I would like to remind all of you that during this pandemic, how the food has actually under the of even the global there are three Nobel Prizes which are directly related to agriculture. I think the one which is on economist, probably you all know, is received for market farm in America. I think that's a very good Nobel Prize in economics. There is a also a very good uh, Nobel Prize given for food program. I think that's also attracted our attention because even in the country, Indian food program was also one of the most successful programs where we did not country in the last six months. And the third goes for history to a technology which is going to be very significant development, whisper cas 9 technology is another biotechnology tool which will revolutionize agriculture. And this 
by parliament have been hailed as revolutionary steps in culture. At the same time, as Viva said, that uh, there has not been protest, primarily from Punjab, Haryana, and Western UP, who are saying that the bills are anti farmer. Now, if I analyze a little more critically, I find that actually those who are small to hold the government, medium farmers, like for example, who have only two hectares of land, one hectare of land, they have never protested. But those are the large farmers, particularly who are growing wheat and rice, and who are already accustomed to the MSP and a secure kind of income. I think they are the ones who are protesting it. So there is a quite a big issue. I don't think. For example, if you take the grape growers of Maharashtra, they have never protested because they are already selling it somewhere else. And they are already free from everything. So likewise, in many of these smallholders, they are not really bothered. So I want to say that uh, this bill appears definitely revolutionary. But uh, what, what does that actually mean that has created so much of problem? I think we need to really discuss it. And we must expel those uh, who are now protesting against you. This uh, webinar we organized with that particular motto so that uh, we should be able to convey to the government that uh, this is a very good step. I would say that the first time we have liberalized farmers law. They can sell anywhere they like. They can do anything. There is no middleman. All those So let us now have the conclusions of this particular webinar to be conveyed through our agrovision foundation to the government. So, Viva, I thank you very much and uh, I welcome once again all my colleagues on this World Food Day because we organized it deliberately on this day. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your welcoming remarks. So, I'll start with Dr. A.K. Singh. Uh, Dr. Singh, since you have to go, I'll take your question first. So as you heard, Dr. Mai also said that, you know, there is one section, I also said that there is one section who are hailing this bill and there is another section who have some concerns and apprehensions. So, and it has attracted a diverse set of reactions from farmers groups across the country. Dr. Singh? Yes, I am here. Okay, yeah. So like I was saying, some have hailed it as a pro-farmers and other claims it otherwise. So what is your opinion? Do you think overall it will be advantageous for, uh, to the farmers? And will it facilitate in export commodities? So should I start my presentation? Yes, please. Yes, please. Thank so thank you very much, Bibaji. Respected Dr. C. D. Maiji, Dr. Neelam Patel, and all the office leaders of AgroVision. I am extremely happy for getting this kind of invitation. I was engaged from 3 o'clock, but I postponed that program to 3.30 uh, because we got uh, CD myself on the board and we have a lot of respect for him and we cannot deny uh, the orders coming from him. We're grateful to you, sir, for inviting us. Now, see, there are many debates going on about the 3D, 3X. And we have been part of this Ministry of Agriculture uh, for a long time. And I have been seeing for the last 10 years, all these are be be getting discussed in all forums. It is not that suddenly it has come and there is some reaction from some quarters that it is not good uh, for the farm. So we, as a scientist, very truly we feel, as a ICR also we feel, that these are the revo revolutionary kind of steps from the government on the simple logic that there were many restrictions to the farmers that they can sell only in the APMC markets. They cannot sell it from the other places. And we have got evidences that those farmers are even the traders who wanted to buy it from the, even the villages from the doorsteps, they were prevented to buy those products. So this is a kind of liberalization to the entire farming community. They can buy it, they can sell it, they are produced from anywhere. I mean to say they can sell it from their house, they can sell it from the godown, and from even processing, wherever they are doing from there itself, they can sell it. So there is a lot of, you can say, scope for the farmer. And at the same time, government is saying time and again, and all the minister has to show that APMC markets will continue. Because this is a bigger country, large number of farmers, 
So one option can never be sufficient for our farmers. And that we always talk in the extension system also, whether it should be a public extension system or private or voluntary organizations. And we say that it should be a multi-agency extension system in our country. And that is what applies to this one. You can say all the acts which are providing opportunity to others also. Time and again it was discussed that private sector is not coming to the agriculture sector in a big way. And that was said to be one lacuna by which it is not going. Probably this is, these acts which have come up, three acts, they will provide an opportunity to the traders also. They can come, they can buy from anywhere. And they can also the essential commodity act provide opportunity that they can store to the any amount. There is no provision now that you have to buy this much only. So there is no, you can say, restriction uh, on the purchase. So anybody who is trying to buy in bulk and wants to export outside, they will be all facilitated. Probably, so the biggest thing is happening that farmers are getting liberalized, but at the same time, trade is also getting liberalized. I have seen in the past also, uh, I, I reference from it, that one company came to buy wheat and they used to sell it to procure from the doorsteps of farmer and selling it to Tamil Nadu. So they were not allowed. They made few buyings, but later on they were denied that you cannot buy as per the said you have to come into the provisions of BMC. So those provisions were lifted. The freedom was freedom is one thing, but at the same time, APMC markets they used to take tax sessions and other things. There were certain levies also. So that also has been removed by the government. So taxation will not be there for any buying from anywhere. So farmer will be facilitated. I mean, today we find that some of the states they are charging 8% from the APMC market, tax from the farmers. So this way, farmer will be benefited once this taxation is also out. And the other big thing which has happened is the contract farming. And this was also debated since quite long, because once there used to be contract, it's not that contract was not happening. But farmer was always suspicious if I'm doing some kind of contract, trader will not obey the kind of contract which has been agreed upon earlier. So the government has brought the provisions today that prices will be agreed right in the beginning. And the trader or the buyer will be, you can say, forced to buy on those agreed rates. So that is there and the government also, there are suspicions that the trader wants to come and if contract will happen, some people talk about this, the land will be there, so you have to leave the land. So government has very categorically written in the act itself that land will not be leased out. No contract, anything will be happen for the land. That is the good thing. Another, if some processing unit or other unit infrastructure is created on the farmer land, that also will go to the farmer once the contract is over. So government has taken decision only in the favor of, you can say, the farmers. Farmers will be liberalized and they will get, you can say, a lot of uh, impetus. And I find that certain commodities, as was happening in some Arasa, as was being said by Dr. C. D. Maisa, there are grow, grape grower associations. Farmers have come together. But those kind of association has not been happening in other parts of the country. So those parts will be also benefited now. They can unite together, they can unite together, they can grow one commodity, they can have to up with one buyer on a contract system, legalized one, and agreed prices they will be able to get. And if there is any kind of, you can say, uh, confusion comes or any obstacle comes, so locally it will be resolved. It will be not going to a court or other place. But local SDM will be competent enough to resolve all the cases uh, within one field. And also it is said that the farmer, the contractor has to pay 75% of the amount just at the time of procurement or buying and remain rather two thirds of the price and one third when within one month of time, 30 days. So I find that in all respect, it has been made for the farmers. It will increase, you can say, more diversified production. 
which we have been talking about, we have been talking about nutrition. And with MSP, it is happening in only two, three crops, four crops, five crops. So only those farmers are benefited. Those who are going for rice, wheat, maize, and some other crops. Not all farmers are benefited. Even today, most of the horticultural community, they are not covered. All the animal products, they are not covered. And you can see that how horticulture sector is booming. We can see how animal sector is booming, how much they are contributing to our GDP. So the, we always talk about the kind of sustainability which is required in the system, farming systems, the food system. We have to produce nutritionally rich food. So nutritionally rich food we have to produce. So how it will be produced until this is a live situation. So this kind of act will also induce, you can say, the electronic trading, at the same time diversification in farming. The defensive traders may come from all around south, southern regions to other regions to get something produced. They can buy it from here and they can get it back as, as per the liking of the people in the southern region. So I see that it will be a game changer in the entire scenario and two suspicions which is there at large in some sections of the society i find only in few parts other parts there is no education nobody is criticizing all these laws because whatever provisions which has come into act they were already existing earlier you look into the entire poultry sector it was in a kind of contract because all those chickens and all the medicines and nutrition used to come from the, you can say the trader, the farmer used to grow it and per, per some benefits used to come to the grower. So this kind of contract arrangement was there, which had been legalized by this government and it will benefit only the farmers, only the growers. And uh, unlike it is being said that the traders will dominate and other things will happen, it is not going to happen. And uh, one thing more, what farmers are, some parts they are discussing, that MSP will not be there. So this also is not a fact, I mean to say, there is no truth into it. And this year itself, the MSP price is from Rs. 50 to 300 government in arms. And also the procurement, I was just going through a statistics, you will find from 2010 to 14, what it was bought, almost six times more it was bought, seven times more it was bought during 14 to 2019 on minimum support price by the government. So all along I can say that uh, this X which has come up, it is going to revolutionize agriculture and diversify agriculture. Export will be booming like anything because we are producing and there is a lot of blood, even buffer stock, are three times more what we require. And most of the grains which are there, they are not of use. So we can export, so, so traders will be hanging up, having an opportunity to buy as much as they want. They can get the contracts from the other countries and they can export it. So that will be benefit for, I find benefit for the both, for the country, for the traders, and also for the farmers. And other stakeholders also, who are the part of the whole agricultural system. So I feel that, by all means, it is going to benefit. Even in the Essential Commodity Act, the government has liberalized to, to store as much a person is willing. But at the same time, there is a clause that if there is any kind of emergency kind of situations like flood, droughts, and even warlike situations, the government can always regulate. These laws can always be regulated by the government. This has been created by government, and government, if something is found wrong, it can be always corrected. But as of now, we find, and it was a long demand from the all, you can say the development officials and the researchers and the farmers also, that it is going to benefit the entire community and uh, the country also. So thank you very much. This is what I wanted to uh, say today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for changing, uh, for sharing your views. And uh, I agree that you said it will bring revolution to agriculture, uh, you know, community, and it will be a game changer and it will diversify agriculture. And uh, it is good to know that it will benefit the farming community. 
and i'm sure that uh, you know it will also economically empower them and make agriculture profitable thank you for sharing your views with us sir so now moving on to dr patel uh, dr patel am i audible to you yes madam yes so dr patel uh, welcome to the session i believe you are not there during the session uh, we would like to ask you to the niti ayog so what are the significant attributes of the new agri bill and how they they are different from the existing law governing marketing marketing of farm produce like you very specific about the thing yes good afternoon respected dr cd mai sir and uh, he is like our guardian in agriculture and our deputy director deputy director general uh, extension dr ajay singh sir and other panelists good afternoon to all of you first i would like to thank you for giving the, the opportunity to niti ayog uh, in fact we have uh, sir already described several things so uh, but uh, i would like to cover few things more in fact these three um, um, reforms or the farms bills they passed on june 5 2020 the uh, first one is apmc by pass ordinance the farmers produce trade and commercial promotion and facilitation ordinance 2020 second is contract farming ordinance the farmers empowerment and protection agreement on price assurance and farm services ordinance 2020 and third was was the essential community ordinance that is addition essential communities amendment ordinance 2020 so if you see the apmc ordinance uh, it's why the reforms were necessary and what was the loop force in the earlier ordinance so in fact in 1950 the first agricultural produce markets regulation act came in the uh, in the power and then in 19203 this act was changed then the model act the state agriculture produce marketing development and regulation came and then again in 2017 the state and union territory agriculture produce and livestock marketing promotion and facilitation act came in the power and after seeing the different um, uh, this loopholes in these ordinances the government has proposed this farmers producers trade and commercial act in 2020 so what was the existing law first we need to understand that The in the in the in the existing law is the identification of the market area for comprising of wholesale market yards and sub yards where the farmers could sell their produce to licensed traders. And we know that the role of the middleman and since our deputy director general is here, so he knows the farmers' problem. And he mentioned also that the farmers are not free to sell their produce. Even then, what was the issues? the issues was that the monopoly monopoly and power of the government as a buyer and regulated wholesale market and there is no freedom for the farmer to sell beyond the regulated wholesale market and stunting the competition by crowding out the presence of private players and the high incidence of marketing cost related to market fees cost of intermediation and lack of adequate infrastructure and services to undertake the selling of commodity and then we don't have the proper facilities in warehouse for the farmers so to avoid any distress for the sale so now what are the new provisions that already our my sir and dr kesin sir has told even that what are the provisions that we have made that here in the fptc act the farmers are free and they can produce sell their produce as per their choice and other than apmc regulated markets so and then there the there we are infusing greater competition by expanding farmers choices and ending the monopoly and in the rent seeking behavior of the traditional intermediaries called arthias so here the role of arthias we are going to curtail you know in the, if you see the, the local market in the village you will find the tomato prices 10 rupees but if when you purchase any meat to the tomato price will be 40 rupees 50 rupees so what is happening this 30 rupees this this uh, benefit is not going to the farmer so here this we are curtailing the role of the middleman and the farmers are free to sell their produce so that the benefit can be easily be transferred to the farmers 
if even the all farmers cannot come, but in the, in the farm of FPO or any of group or a community, they can make a group, they, they can um, uh, approach to nearby city and they are not bound to sell in that FPMC market. They can sell anywhere. As you know, in our country, we are having several malls. So in the malls also, the farmers can go in there and then they sell their produce. If you come uh, to the uh, these uh, trades here, uh, and the farmers, not only in the market, he is allowed to sell from the farm gates, factory premises, warehouse, silos, and cold storage. And then here, the, the first time we are implementing this uh, insurance and also the credit link. So that the farmers, in case of any difficulty or misfortune occurred, then he has not to go for the any um, informal credit to take any informal credit facility. So the farmers are, will get the support of um, uh, insurance and also the credit facility. Like this, if we go to the second uh, our contract farming act. So in the contract farming act, this uh, earlier we were having in 2018, that is state UTs agriculture produce contract farming, promotion and facilitation. And in the 2018 act, here are the dependence on states for resolving any difficulties with respect to the implementation. So the main difference is that in 2018, the dependence was on the state. But in 2020, the central government will facilitate in an act for any changes, and there will be local dispute redressal mechanism also. So here, the central government will facilitate and act any change, and but the local um, uh, this mechanism will be there in case of any difficulty. And then, in the previous, the insured buying of entire pre-agreed quantity at predetermined price. This was there. But here, this time, there was a change. Insured buying of entire pre-agreed quantity, a price determined price. This was the from earlier. In addition, the process of price determination must be mentioned in the agreement. So not only the price, the process which they have followed in uh, for the uh, fixing the prices of the produce, this should be mentioned in the agreement. So this is the change from the earlier amendment the amendment that we have made and the farming agreement should be linked with insurance and credit that I have told to mitigate the risk and flow of credit to both farmers and sponsors. So here this um, credit and uh, insurance for both, not only for the farmers but the, but the, uh, the sponsors also. And here this the farmer can have this um, agreement for one season, one production cycle of live start and the maximum period will be the five years until this production cycle is more than the five years. And then this agreement is linked with the, uh, uh, the suppose there is price uh, is subjected to valuation, the guaranteed price, the produce is clear reference to for any amount about the guaranteed price must be specified in the time of agreement. So that the any variation in the guaranteed price should be mentioned in the time of the agreement. And then, this if the farmers and buyers is having some issue, they can go at the SDM level, at the local level to resolve the issue. And the second, the, the, uh, the confusion in the farmers that this the agreement on the land. No, is agreement is not on the land. Agreement is only on the produce. And that too from the one cycle, for one crop cycle to maximum five years, not beyond the five years in general circumstances. So this is the uh, this our contract farming. When we come to essential commodities act, this essential commodities act was first time came in 1955. And in 1955, this act came in the interest of the general public and to control the production, supply, distribution, trade and commerce of the certain commodities. Why the same in 1955 this um, law came? The objective of this law at that time to ensure availability of food to all sections of the population at affordable prices. At this issue related to price speculation, holding, and black marketing. Then this uh, in the 90s, what were the issues with the 1955 this essential commodity jet ECA? Because there can be uncertainties, uh, uncertainties due to large stock limits. Why it, what is happening? Suppose somebody is doing the food processing industry particularly. They have to stock some uh, produce for their factory. 
But because of this, they were not able to do it. Therefore, we are not getting um, many entrepreneurs and industries coming um, uh, for this uh, value addition. So therefore, this change is made. Now, what is happening is we to enhance the market competition, farmers' income, and then uh, this com consumer uh, uh, interest also will be protected here. And supply of cereals, pulses, potato, onions, uh, edible oil seeds, may be regulated only under extraordinary circumstances. But if you find that there is some uh, natural calamity, famine, famine, war, and something happened, extraordinary rise in the prices, then in that condition, the stock limits can be reimposed again in prices. If you find that 100% rise in retail price to horticulture produce, or 50% price rise in non perishable produce over a period of 12 months, or in the comparison of last five years, which is uh, whichever is lower. So, therefore, this uh, in the uh, cases of extra, extra early situation, this stock limits can be imposed. And then the regulation of stock limits shall not pertain to processor or any value chain participants. So this this because we want to increase the value addition in our country. So therefore, this stock limits will not pertain to any processor. And then the, and the third thing in the essential commodities act is not going to impact public distribution or the targeted public distribution system. Now, what is the debate which is going on in our country since last few days that the states with influential RFIA system fears that the revenue will be foregone. But this is the misconception that the private player, player will uh, raid the farmers, will uh, stringent the contracts, no. And the third thing that I would like to clear here about the MSP. Now, people are thinking that uh, the, uh, the ML, uh, government is phasing out MSP. No, that is not there. You, you have seen already Kharif MSP were declared with increase in the MSP in comparison to last year. And the Ravi also in the process. And if you will, today you will get the it must be for the Ravi season also. And the third, second, there's the which misconception that is going to shut down the Mandi system. No, we are expanding the Mandi system as for the choice of the farmers. So the private uh, and the misconception that private sector uh, with, uh, create some problem. No, private sector will not be a death knell for farmers. Uh, the private sector, of course, uh, can have the better agreement with the farmers and the private sector in the third terms of malls or any mandi can um, play a role because they are having the capacity to construct, their, to develop the value chain, to construct the cold storage so that the farmers can have their produce there. And then the, under the contract farming, the farmers will be under pressure. No, this is misconcept. They, 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 they will not be under any pressure. They are free. And in the case of the farmers are thinking that big companies will be at, 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 uh, in the advantages position. No, that is not there. Farmers are free. If they want to do it, the agreement, that is okay. Otherwise, the old system already is there. MSP is there, Monday system is there, and Atiyas are there. If you want to follow that, if you are happy, you can go. If you are not happy, then you can um, ad, um, um, adapt these three reforms and make the changes. And the second, uh, this I would like to tell you because these three ordinances are going, will be the game changer in the agriculture. And you will find that all the prices which consumers are paying, this is not transferring to the farmers directly. So our aim is here to pass this, this uh, revenue, which is the uh, normal consumer is paying, to the farmers, so that we can um, decrease the role of the middleman. And you are seeing this in the agriculture sector particularly, there are several middlemen, they are playing the role, and that is why there is a big price difference at the field level and in the cities. So this, this price difference, whatever is happening, this will pass on to the farmers. And now the farmers are free. And there are several examples in our country when farmers have made this direct marketing of their produce, they have increased their revenue and their livelihood, livelihood was improved like anything. So it means, we, we in short, from the media side, since we are involved in all the, the farm bills, that this is not going to any way harm to the farmers 
it will help the farmers small and marginal farmers and harm the consumers also with the consumers uh, with the price the consumers they are paying this also will get reduced because the middleman will not be there so the from the uh, farmers to the consumers the product flow will take place so here i uh, hear this is the all will be in the benefited situation including consumers and farmers so therefore this uh, if you can pass this our feelings that we are with the farmer working for the farmers and we will not do anything when the farmers community is going to suffer i mean we cannot think to do any things when the farmers will have any difficulty not even now in the future also so these three reforms are going to help them and uh, some people are making some uh, agitations uh, without understanding the whole things they can come they can discuss with the government any time in case of any confusion but there is nothing that is going to harm any consumer or the farmer so in short that i want to say thank you for giving the opportunity thank you sir for your beautiful talk and uh, as a result of the session फार्मर्स and you also talked about various apprehensions apprehensions and mis uh, misconceptions so i just would like to ask you one another question so you know regarding these apprehensions and misconceptions there is a need to create awareness among the farmers to clear all these uh, about the msp is the procurement continuation by the government and other you know the queries or the concerns that they have so what is the work uh, that has been done uh, by niti ayog in order to create awareness among the <laughs> Uh, madam you know this ayog is think tank so we work with the ministry and the, with the ministry uh, this uh, we are uh, having the meeting with the various farmers organization formal informal channel that they can come they can discuss and we are using this newspaper tv debates and like your forum to disseminate these things and uh, very soon we are going to start a um, series and for, for the discussion with the farmers and our honorable member agriculture uh, dr ramesh sanji he is also planning to address a big gathering at the farmers so we are working with the farmers the ministry of agriculture of course you are very right vipa that there is several misconception about this uh, and this uh, means uh, in this uh, ordinances and people are creating it, particularly in msp this you just see that the kissing told that there this time we have made the record purchase under the msp even you just i would like to tell one more thing all people like freedom we are like freedom so if farmer is guys going to get freedom then why they what is the difficulty because they are the producers so they are having the freedom to sell anywhere if the consumer is going to have freedom to purchase this uh, commodity at a lower price so the consumer should get the, the, the that freedom why this middle man playing all these these thi these things so th that is why we are putting your pressure so yes i think we need to do much more so that we can convince the farmers also great ma'am thank you very much so moving on to uh, uh, mr damodran Mr. Damodaran, these new acts, as uh, our uh, you know other panelists said, that they will uh, immensely benefit the farming community. And we also spoke about some opposition from certain corners from the country. Down reality. What is your opinion? Will it be really beneficial for the farmers in the long run? Damodaran. Uh, Vivek, am I audible? Arish. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yes. 
did did yeah. you get my question? Yeah, yeah, I, I got your question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, see, uh, 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 there was no curb on on farmers selling anywhere or to anybody. Let us let, let us be very clear. You know, uh, uh, any farmer could go to any part of the country. You know, he just had to show his land records. Uh, uh, that 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 that, that uh, the crop came from his side and all these things. So this is uh, this freedom is more for the buyer, okay? But but which is good, okay? Right? I mean, see see without the without the buyer having the freedom, the farmer also doesn't benefit, right? So 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 technically, this will help uh, say companies buying directly from the farmers, etc. But uh, we should be a little whatever. Uh, Cautious before assuming that this will happen. You know, I, I'll give I'll, I'll give two examples. One is milk, right? Milk was never an APMC commodity. You don't you don't sell milk in a mandi, right? But how many uh, uh, how many dairies do you know who buy directly from farmers? Very few, especially private. I mean, I can name a handful of them. You know, maybe a Nestle or a Hudson or somebody. Everybody goes through middlemen. Okay, they they go through bulk vendors. Okay, the second is the best example I think is Bihar, right? Bihar dismantled its APMCs. It became a free market in two thousand six. Has that has that increased? Uh, has that removed the middleman? No, it, it has not. So I don't think companies are going to get rid of middlemen. They need middlemen. Okay, and and there are two reasons for it. Farmers tend to fight with the companies. Okay, farmers will bash. Uh, Cargill farmers will bash uh, uh, Reliance. Farmers will bash Big Basket. Farmers will bash uh, you know. So, uh, 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 so so farmers will tend to bash them. And secondly, the farmer will suddenly say, you know, I want fifteen thousand rupees in cash. So Reliance is not going to give them fifteen thousand rupees in cash, right? So the companies will continue to depend on the middlemen. Okay, and these middlemen are the ones who will manage the ecosystem. Okay, uh, so so it is just that probably you may have a new kind of a middleman. The middleman may not be the Arthya who was sitting in the mandi. You know, it could be an aggregator. This aggregator is somebody who will have links to many farmers, etc. So, which is why I'm I'm more I'm equally uh, uh, I'm more interested in actually uh, in that uh, agriculture that one lakh crore you know agriculture investment. Uh, Fund which has been which has been uh, created by the government, you know, whatever through uh, through through uh, uh, credit guarantees and kind of a thing. See, if this helps in creating new kinds of aggregators, you know, new kinds of rural entrepreneurs, you know, people who will who will aggregate the produce of farmers, you know, and who will put in new systems. See, like in the case of milk, the biggest thing which 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 uh, according to me, which has happened is uh, you know because of Amul, you have uh, you know the farmer gets to know. How much uh, her uh, fat and uh, the, the the milk the, the 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 fat and SNF content in her milk is right now the farmer has no bargaining power right I mean the the farmer goes to the mandi uh, there is auction the, there are there are arthi the, the, there are traders who come somebody bites somebody puts in the tongue and then and then they'll say is me moisture content bara uh, percent hai chauda percent hai see there is no system like that so if you have a system where you know maybe you know you will have New uh, artificial intelligence-based uh, tools, you know, where the farmer will be able to bargain better. You know, uh, uh, the, the, the farmer can say, "Look, my uh, my 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 paddy has so much of uh, amylose content. You know, my my uh, my chili has uh, uh, my 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 turmeric has uh, uh, the, the, the whatever uh, of the the, the 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 particular uh, active ingredient." You know. See, these are the kind of things which I will be more interested. So I don't think these reforms are going to have any immediate impact or something. And then there is also the legal angle. You know, if the states were to go to the courts, it's not going to be easy. See, let, uh, let us let us be very clear: agricultural marketing is a state subject. It is not a central. It is not in the concurrent list. Marketing is different from trade. Marketing is something which the farmer does. Okay. The the the, uh, the 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 sale till the first the, the first point of sale when the farmer is taking his produce to the mandi, it is a farming activity. You know, it, it, it is it is as much uh, uh, it is as much it is just an extension of his production. But after the sale has been made, okay, in the mandi, then after that it is trade. 
you know i think any state who will go to the to the to the to the supreme court i think this law will be stuck off because it is it is very clear you know that, that when 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 they say agriculture is in the state list it includes both production and sale and and sale by the farmer see production is by the farmer sale is by the farmer but now if the trader goes and sells etc that is a different thing you know or 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 produce moving from one one state to another those are all clearly where the center can legislate and here see there are many other things there are many other problems with the legislation now, uh, uh, fine okay if a trade happens uh, outside apmc there will be no market fee but how can you say that the state says cannot be paid you cannot do that see like 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 punjab and haryana punjab for example has a rural development cess okay which is which is which is under its own act it, it has something called a punjab rural development uh, uh, fund act i think of 1987 how can the center say that that if you buy that you don't pay the state taxes that cannot be the case right and we surely don't want to see a situation where uh, where 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 people are buying outside the mandi not for any not for any inherent uh, advantage you know that, that you know i am buying directly but just to avoid taxes you know that you cannot allow you know but this is like uh, uh, and the center cannot tell people don't pay taxes don't pay taxes i mean this is this, is, this cannot be done you know so so i think these things so there will be a lot of problems you know whereas i am more bullish about you know like this essential commodities act thing you know this uh, uh, removing the stock holding limit that's a wonderful reform and i hope it will be implemented though i doubt it we have seen already in the case of uh, in the case of anian right the, the day morning they introduced that essential commodities uh, uh, amendment act by evening government had banned anian exports right and right now there are even i'm told uh, the, the, there are income tax raids taking place on on anian traders in nashik you know this is what as you know i'm told so uh, so so uh, and and you you are going to see now food prices rising in the next 6 7 months and this is a global uh, trend it's not nothing to do with just india so during this period will the government invoke the essential commodities act you know my guess is they will do it okay because because food inflation is also rising and we know that whenever food prices rise government immediately jumps whenever food prices crash government doesn't bother okay so so all these things about you know we are pro farmer and all everything disappears when 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 onion prices cross 30 rupees when when potato prices so i will go by these things i don't go by what politicians say and and by uh, these things and and this is what i've been hearing so far in the discussion you know i go by ground reality what is happening i and and my and, and my sense of ground the ground reality is uh, we are going to see a challenge i don't know whether this law will first of all these laws will pass legal scrutiny okay the the, the court scrutiny the second is practical thing you know what is going to happen to 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 arhar what is going to happen to anian prices you know and now you know global prices are rising okay will 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 government back and this government particularly has a very bad record you know especially when it comes to essential commodities act you know like never before have there been it raids on anian traders you know never before have they have have as directorate of revenue intelligence you know ed and all these and, and now since those people are now free from uh, uh, sushant singh rajput now they will come to anians and all these uh, things you know so so as a journalist as a reporter i am very cynical you know and 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 i think i will retain my uh, this thing to be a little cynical thank you so sure, thank you thank you very much for sharing your perspective so i know that you are questioning the practicality of these reforms so we also have uh, another gentleman here from uh, shaskari sangathan who are i think they are pro this these particular reforms so let's hear it from him now mr dan uh, mr dan banwet uh, <laughs> uh, open marketing and you must be happy that these reforms are being introduced now but uh, like uh, uh, mr damodaran said there are still some apprehension and he is questioning the practicality of the same and there are also some farmers who are opposing the same so what 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 is your view on the same good evening everybody and for uh, inviting me in this webinar to my to cut my talk short have to say that uh, Agree with uh, uh, Dr. Kedi Mai and Mr. Uh, A.K. Singh. Damodaran. We were the first farmers' organization, and maybe the only farmers' farmers' organization who have openly supported these bills. 
with some suggestions definitely we support it because this is what we are fighting for last 40 years under the leadership of uh, late charan joshi we want open trade let the farmers have the freedom to sell wherever they want we are, we are compelled to sell in the apmcs where we are looted they are the slaughter houses of farmers we say this way because when we go there we are not uh, we don't have the chance to tell that i want to i don't want to sell it under this there is an auction and somebody else uh, decides the pr price of my produce so farmers should be allowed and these uh, the bills they are giving that freedom and we welcome it apmc is last uh, last week one incident happened here in uh, washi mumbai a farmer had uh, taken 2.2 uh, and a half tons of uh, watermelon uh, trade there goes under the towel if there is no option the buyer and the seller put a piece of cloth under the hands and they uh, uh, squeeze their fingers and the price is decided the farmer standing nearby doesn't know to whom it is sold at what rate it is sold he was said that uh, when he called from the home that what are the price he said that it is 25 rupees and then he paid the farmer at the rate of 14 rupees and 10 rupees and when the complaint came to me i rec uh, recorded the call and made it viral it reached the ministry and then the uh, uh, trader came to the farmer and paid him 27,400 rupees just for 2.5 tons of uh, watermelon. And thousands of trucks of uh, truckloads of material comes there in Uwasi, Mumbai daily. Crores of rupees of, are looted from the farmers. APMC gives this opportunity to the traders to loot the farmers. This is very bad. If you are allowed to sell out of the APMC, if the trader comes to our house, comes to our fields and decides the price, the farmer has a say that farmer has a chance to bargain that I am not going to sell under this price or I can sell it at this price. But here in APMC, in an open auction or not, we are not allowed to, to bargain or tell our price. So these uh, uh, acts, they are giving us this freedom. So we welcome it. Regarding essential commodity acts, it's very good that uh, grains, pulses, oranges, onion and potato are now not in that list. But if we are removed from this list and it is implemented properly, investment may come into the fields, into the farms. Why uh, uh, investment hasn't come in uh, agriculture? Because of this Asian Spell Commodity Act, all, always there is a hanging sword on the head of the farmers. We don't know when our uh, export will be stopped, when our uh, when imports will be done to reduce our prices. So when an uh, entrepreneur wants to put up his uh, business here, he will think of these uh, laws. If this thing is going to happen, if I am going to store uh, soybean or if I am going to store uh, maize and government uh, stock limit, all my stock is and I, I won't be able to do business. So, what companies will come in agriculture? Hello. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Please, please go ahead. Uh -oh. Yeah, yes. Mr. Kanwit, can you hear me? There is some... Uh... I think he has a low bandwidth, so we are not able to hear uh, what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. So, Bhagiraji, now I'll move on to you. Let us wait for him to come. So, you've heard uh, all the perspectives now from our uh, earlier panelists. So, now I would like to uh, you know, ask you, like taking the background of Rajasthan, I believe you have been traveling extensively to Rajasthan. 
So what is the probable cause of opposing the bill there? What is the ground situation in the state? And are really farmers concerned with such reforms? Thank you, Vibhaji. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. You know, uh, most of my previous speaker, uh, they have given a very good idea about what is the plus and the minus of the bill. Okay? Some of them actually raise um, uh, concerns, apprehensions, uh, practicality of uh, implementing the bill. Um, I, I really don't want to go into the detail of the bill, but I, you know, uh, the, based on my own analysis and based, of, based on the जो मैं काम कर रहा हूं मैं थोड़ा हिंदी में बात करूंगा क्योंकि यहां बहुत सारे किसान भाई जुड़े हुए हैं जी जी तो मैं कुछ उनके साथ कुछ हिंदी में बातें करना चाह रहा हूं तो तो मुझे जो इन बिल के बारे में जो मैं लोगों से बातें सुन रहा हूं इसकी क्या विशेषताएं हैं बहुत सारे लोग विशेषताएं बताने वाले हैं और बहुत सारे लोग ऐसे भी हैं जो इन कानूनों की क्या विसंगतियां हैं इनकी क्या शॉर्टकमिंग्स हैं और ये किन लोगों को बेनिफिट करेगा और किन को बेनिफिट नहीं करेगा इसके बारे में बहुत सारी बातें अभी आपने सुनी और बहुत सारे न्यूज़पेपर में हमें बताया जा रहा है मैं जो भी लोग इस वेबिनार के थ्रू जुड़े हुए हैं उनको पहले यह बताना चाहता हूं कि एसेंशियल कमोडिटी एक्ट कोई नया एक्ट नहीं लाया गया है उसमें एक छोटा सा बदलाव किया गया है और वो बदलाव कंज्यूमर को कंज्यूमर उपभोक्ताओं को सीधा उसका इंपैक्ट होगा जो एसेंशियल कमोडिटी एक्ट के अंदर कितना मटेरियल स्टोर हो स्टॉक पार्किंग हो और प्राइस है वो कब गवर्नमेंट उसके ऊपर प्राइस कंट्रोल करेगी ये सीधा कंज्यूमर से रिलेटेड मैटर्स है एक जो एक्ट है जिसके बारे में मैडम ने हरीश जी ने सबने बताया है जो फार्मर्स एग्रीमेंट ऑन प्राइस एश्योरेंस एंड ये जो है वो फूड स्टफ के प्रोडक्शन के बारे में है उसमें कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग को कैसे यू you नो know, सरकार एक लीगल फ्रेमवर्क दे रही है और तीसरा जो लॉ है वो एक्चुअली खाद्य पदार्थों का ट्रेड जिसमें हरीश जी ने आज एक नया एंगल लाए हैं मार्केटिंग और सेल का ट्रेड किसान क्या करता है और आगे उसका मार्केटिंग कैसे होता है तो बहुत सारी पॉजिटिव बातें बताई गई है लेकिन जो मैं मुझे जो कंसर्न्स नजर आ रहे हैं बेस्ड ऑन मेरा खुद का एक्सपीरियंस है उसके बारे में मैं कुछ आपके साथ बातें करना चाह रहा हूँ जो सबसे बड़ा कंसर्न है जो आई थिंक भारत सरकार को इस कंसर्न को किसी भी सूरत में इस कंसर्न के ऊपर सरकार को कोई कोई बहुत बड़ा कदम उठाना पड़ेगा वो ये है कि क्या हम किसानों को मार्केट फोर्सेस के ऊपर डायरेक्टली छोड़ रहे हैं क्या मार्केट फोर्स है मार्केट वुड डिटरमिन दी प्राइस डिस्कवरी फॉर द फार्मर्स फॉर द प्रोड्यूस दैट दे प्रोड्यूस अगर एक किसान अगर एक किसान कोई मेटीरियल प्रोड्यूस करता है चाहे वो वेजिटेबल हो हॉर्टिकल्चर का हो चाहे वो फूड ग्रेन्स हो चाहे वो लाइव स्टॉक का हो क्या वो किसान की जो प्राइस है उसकी प्राइस उसको राइट प्राइस डिस्कवरी कैसे होगी और उसको कैसे सुनिश्चित किया जाए आई थिंक इस ये जो ये एक बहुत अहम मुद्दा है इस पूरे कानून के अंदर तो मे, मेरा ऐसा मानना है कि अभी कोरोना काल में क्योंकि ये एक्ट ला, लाए गए हैं लेकिन किसानों को सही प्राइस मिले इसको सुनिश्चित करने के लिए सरकार को कोई फ्रेमवर्क डेवलप करना पड़ेगा एक तो मैं मेरा सबमिशन ये है मैं ऐसा इसलिए कह रहा हूं उस पर कारण ये है कि जो एग्रीकल्चर कमोडिटीज हैं वो एक पर्टिकुलर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम में उसका हार्वेस्ट आता है जब सप्लाई इज थाउजेंड्स टाइम मोर देन द डिमांड जब आपको मार्केट में बायर मिलेगा नहीं ओके okay? इतना ज्यादा प्रोड्यूस मार्केट में आता है obviously because supply is much more than the demand so it is certainly will actually put the pressure on the market driven prices usme kisano ko bahut nuksan ho sakta hai to mere hisab se jo ye price discovery ka jo mechanism hai isko kaise sunishchit kiya jaye ye ek bahut bada mudda hai aur i think ye price discovery ke aas paas pura msp ka mudda ghum raha hai to ye jo msp ka mudda agar sarkar isko jab tak इसको तभी सॉल्व किया जा सकता है जब सरकार को एक फ्रेमवर्क बनाए जिसके तहत चाहे आप कॉस्ट एंड प्राइस कमीशन हो या कोई नया कमीशन बने जो एक राइट प्राइस डिस्कवरी किसान को सही प्राइस के दाम उसके मिले वो सुनिश्चित करना दूसरा जो काम जो बात मैं बताना चाह रहा हूं कि जैसा हरीश जी ने कहा है एग्रीकल्चर का जो ट्रेड है वो ट्रेड है वो मार्केटिंग है वो स्टेट सब्जेक्ट है 
तो मुझे ऐसे लगता है कि भारत सरकार को राज्य सरकारों के साथ मिलके ये सुनिश्चित करना पड़ेगा कि किसान का किसी भी सूरत में शोषण नहीं हो आई थिंक ये जो मेन जो ग्राउंड से जो इश्यू आ रहे हैं किसानों को ऐसे लगता है कि जो एक जो चौदह करोड़ देश में किसान है उसमें एक करोड़ किसानों को जो अच्छे किसान है जो पैसे वाले हैं जिनके पास में बड़ी लैंड होल्डिंग है वो तो अच्छा काम कर लेंगे लेकिन जो 95% किसान है जो छोटा लैंड होल्डिंग है उसके उसको आप कैसे सपोर्ट करो तो उसके ऊपर सरकार को पूरा ध्यान देना पड़ेगा एंड इस दिशा में एक जो प्राइस प्रोटेक्शन का जो कॉन्सेप्ट है उसको सरकार कहीं कहीं इस ट्रेड के लॉ में मुझे लगता है कि लाना चाहिए दूसरी बात जो मैं तीसरी बात जो मैं ये बताना चाह रहा हूँ कि अभी सरकार ने दस हजार ने कहा है कि एग्रीगेशन जो एग्रीगेटर जो नए आरतीय होंगे दे वुड कम इन द फॉर्म ऑफ एग्रीगेटर्स आई थिंक ये एग्रीगेटर को हम पंचायत लेवल पे कैसे लेके आए अभी सरकार ने दस हजार एफ की का प्रावधान रखा है देश के अंदर सात लाख विलेजेस हैं दस दस हजार एफ से कुछ नहीं होने वाला मुझे लगता है कि हर पंचायत लेवल पे भारत सरकार को स्टेट सरकार के साथ मिलकर ये जो एग्रीगेटर का ग्रुप जिसमें किसान खुद एफ का मालिक होगा उसको ड्राइव करेंगे ताकि किसान को ये निश्चित हो कि भाई वो और उसके लोग वो खुद एफ के मालिक हैं एग्रीगेटर्स हैं और उन वो राइट राइट प्राइस जो बायर है उनसे ले सकते हैं इसके ऊपर एफ को हमें हमारे पंचायत लेवल पे लेके आना पड़ेगा एक जो तीसरा मुद्दा है जो जिसके बारे में मैं बताना चाहता हूँ वो ये है कि एग्रीकल्चर का जो हम जो जितना भी जो ट्रेड डिस्प्यूट की बात हुई है ये एस लेवल के ऊपर है आपको पता है नागपुर में रहते हैं आपके नागपुर के अंदर एक एक शहर का एस डी है और एक ग्रामीण नागपुर का एस है अब आप सुनिए जब मैं जोधपुर में हूँ यहाँ 20 लाख की आबादी है दो एस डी है अब वो एस डी है वो किसानों के जो डिस्प्यूट्स होंगे उसको कैसे रिजोल्व करेगा किसान एस तक कैसे एक्सेसिबिलिटी मिलेगी मुझे ऐसे लगता है कि देश के अंदर अगर हमें ये रिफॉर्म को सही मायने में अगर हमें इसको इम्प्लीमेंट करना है तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि पंचायत लेवल के ऊपर एग्रीकल्चर कोर्ट का जो एक कॉन्सेप्ट बनाने की चाहे तहसील लेवल पे हो या पंचायत लेवल पे हो एक एग्रीकल्चर कोर्ट बनाने की जरूरत है इस इस पर्टिकुलर लॉ के माध्यम माध्यम से जहाँ तक इसके प्लस पॉइंट है मैं इस लॉ से लॉ ने जो मार्केट को ओपन किया है इसका मैं बहुत स्वागत करता हूँ इट इज़ लाइक ए वाटर सेट मोमेंट फॉर एग्रीकल्चर ट्रेड इसमें कोई दो राय नहीं है और इसे किसान और बायर के बीच का जो गैप है आज मैं राजस्थान में जीरा जिस भाव में यहाँ प्रोड्यूस करता हूँ आप लोग माई साहब विभाजी आप जो जीरा परचेज रिटेल प्राइस पे खरीदते हैं उसमें तीन से चार गुणा का प्राइस डिफरेंस होता है तो अगर हम इस लॉ के माध्यम से ये प्राइस डिफरेंस को किसी भी तरह से अगर हम कम करके और ये बेनिफिट जो रिटेलर का बेनिफिट अगर किसान तक पहुंचा पाए तो आई थिंक ये देश में एग्रीकल्चर का सबसे बड़ा रिफॉर्म होगा और उसे किसानों को लाभ भी मिलेगा एक लास्ट पॉइंट जो मैं आपके साथ शेयर करना चाहता हूं देश के अंदर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग और जो क्वालिटी माइक जो क्वालिटी प्रोड्यूस है वो इसलिए आज तक सक्सेसफुल नहीं हुआ था बिकॉज वहाँ पे कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग के प्रोविजन्स नहीं थे सीड्स के अंदर और प्लांटिंग मटीरियल के अंदर नई जो ब्रीड है एनिमल्स की उनके अंदर ज़्यादा टेक्नोलॉजी इनपुट लेवल पे नहीं आई बिकॉज जो ये टेक्नोलॉजी लाना चाह रहे हैं वो जो उनके लिए प्रोड्यूस करेंगे उनके साथ में एक्सक्लूसिव कॉन्ट्रैक्ट करके उसे बाई करना चाहते हैं तो ये सिंस हमारे जो एग्जिस्टिंग कानून में ये एक बहुत बड़ा गैप था तो मेरे हिसाब से जो ये कानून है ये गैप को पूरा करेगा जिसकी वजह से टेक्नोलॉजी इन्फ्यूजन होगा इन एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्शन सिस्टम आप आप मार्केटिंग की बात छोड़िए इन कानूनों की वजह से टेक्नोलॉजिकल इन्फ्यूजन होगा और जो मेल न्यूट्रिशन की जो प्रॉब्लम है उसको काफ़ी हद तक रिजॉल्व करने के लिए कानून बहुत अहम भूमिका रोल प्ले करेंगे ये आप देखना ये किसी ने अभी तक ये मुद्दा नहीं उठाया मैं खुद है जो मस्टर्ड के अंदर हाई ओलेक कंटेंट के ऊपर काम कर रहा हूँ और मुझे पता है पिछले पाँच साल में प्रोडक्शन में मुझे कितनी दिक्कत आ रही थी तो मुझे लगता है इन कानूनों की वजह से जो न्यूट्रिशनली इनरिच ग्रेन का अच्छे लेवल पे प्रोडक्शन होगा नई टेक्नोलॉजी आएगी और किसान और टेक्नोलॉजी प्रोवाइडर के बीच में बहुत सारे कॉन्ट्रैक्ट होने की उम्मीद है तो ये एक दूसरा पहलू है जो इस लॉ के माध्यम से फायदा होना पड़ेगा लेकिन जो बॉटम लाइन जो हर किसान जिसे मैं मिल रहा हूँ हर राजनेता जिसे मैं मिल रहा हूँ 
और जो हर राजनीति में इंटरेस्ट रखने वाला लोग है उसे जो मिल रहा हूं उसका एक ही उसको एक मन के अंदर वहम है कि उसका प्राइस डिटर्मिनेशन कैसे होगा और उस उस प्राइस क्योंकि एग्रीकल्चर यूज टाइम पे आता है पंद्रह दिन के अंदर पूरा ग्रेन मार्केट में आएगा उस टाइम प्राइस में स्लम्प होगा और उससे किसान को कैसे बचाया जाए तो ये कुछ खास बातें थी जो मुझे इस कानून के माध से नजर आ रही है जो मैं आप लोगों के साथ शेयर करना चाह रहा हूँ थैंक यू सो मच Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Chaudhary, and it is good to know that these reforms will bridge gaps. And as you also given some suggestions, as I might say, कि एक तो जो आप कह रहे हैं कि to bring FPOs on panchayat level, and then also to you know create some kind of an agriculture code at panchayat or tehsil level. So I believe uh, Ms. Patel is also there on the call, so she she will take note of all these suggestions given by you. And I hope that these suggestions get incorporated. Into the new act that will, you know, certainly be implemented sooner or later stages. अच्छा एक मुझे आपसे एक और बात पूछनी है। अभी you know before you Mr. Damodaran was speaking and he was talking about onion. This export import curve, you know, a a a point पे हम लोग कहते हैं कि that you know the farmers are not getting good rate. And जैसे ही उनको अच्छा rate मिलना शुरू होता है, we stop export and increase imports. तो उसमें आपका क्या कहना है? देखो जैसा हरीशजी ने कहा है। जो हरीश जी ने कहा है मैं उनकी बात से सहमत हूं जब कंज्यूमर के लिए फार्म प्रोड्यूस की प्राइस इंक्रीज होगी विच इज लाइक वेन गवर्नमेंट सी दैट दिस इज लाइक बियॉन्ड ए थर सोल्ड फार्मर को फार्मर सरकार को याद नहीं रहता फिर सरकार को कंज्यूमर याद आ जाता है ये जो ये जो डायलेमा है ये बैलेंस इसको लाने के लिए देश के अंदर बहुत बड़ा एग्रीकल्चर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सिस्टम बनाना पड़ेगा इसके अंदर ग्रेडिंग का शॉर्टिंग का स्टोरेज की फैसिलिटी का ताकि कंटिन्यूस सप्लाई ऑफ पेरिसेबल की अवेलेबिलिटी मार्केट में रहे इसको बनाने के लिए जो भारत सरकार प्रधानमंत्री जी ने एक लाख करोड़ का जो फंड की बातें कही है अब ये फंड कहाँ है किसको मिलने वाला है कैसे मिलेगा कहाँ स्टोरेज की फैसिलिटी बनाई जा सकती है ये बहुत सारी बातें हैं जिसके बारे में ग्राउंड लेवल के ऊपर कोई भी इंफॉर्मेशन नहीं है तो मुझे लगता है मैं वंदना जी जो मैडम बैठी है उनको मैं ये बताना चाहूंगा कि ये सारी बातें आपके दिल्ली में बहुत अच्छी है लेकिन ग्राउंड लेवल पे ये जो बड़े फंड है उसका किसान और प्रोग्रेसिव किसान एग्रीगेटर इसका सही उपयोग कैसे करें इसकी एक्सेसिबिलिटी कैसे करें आप 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 ग्रांट मत दीजिए आप सॉफ्ट लोन दीजिए एग्रीकल्चर के अंदर आप सॉफ्ट लोन दीजिए आप लॉन्ग टर्म सॉफ्ट लोन दीजिए और ये जो एग्रीकल्चर के अंदर एग्रीकल्चर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट आप नागपुर के आसपास कहीं भी चले जाओ आपको बहुत कम वेयर हाउस मिलेंगे पूरे देश में इतना एग्रीकल्चर प्रोड्यूस होता है अरे हमारे देश के अंदर तो हर गांव के अंदर एक स्टोरेज की फैसिलिटी शॉर्टिंग की और ग्रेडिंग की फैसिलिटी होगी जब तक शॉर्टिंग और ग्रेडिंग की फैसिलिटी नहीं होगी क्वालिटी के ऊपर अच्छा प्राइस कभी नहीं मिलेगा क्योंकि अभी कुछ क्वालिटी नहीं है अभी जो एम दिया जाता है विभाजी वो क्वालिटी प्रोड्यूस पे नहीं दिया जाता है वो मिनिमम क्वालिटी पे दिया जाता है अगर हमें मैक्सिमम क्वालिटी का मैक्सिमम प्राइस रियलाइजेशन किसान को ट्रांसफर करना है तो हमें देश के अंदर मैस्यू एग्रीकल्चर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर क्रिएट करने की सख्त आवश्यकता है नहीं तो ये एसेंशियल कॉम्यूडिटी एक्ट में जो बदलाव किए हैं ये बदलाव का कोई मायने नहीं रखेगी और सरकार कंज्यूमर को खुश करने के लिए जैसे ही भाव बढ़ेंगे वो उसका एक्ट को अपने उसमें लागू करेगी एक्चुअली उनकी वोट बैंक कंज्यूमर है फार्मर्स आर ऑलरेडी डिवाइडेड सो दे नो वेरी इजी टू गेट वोट फार्मर फार्मर्स को तो सर्वी ये विलेजेस में सबसे ज्यादा नुकसान तो पॉलिटिक्स ने किया है बिकॉज वी हैव फॉर्म अननेसेसरीली सो मेनी ग्रुप इन विलेजेस अब सिटी में क्या है कि तुमको तो खाने का चाहिए तो इसीलिए गवर्नमेंट क्या करती है कि यूनियन के प्राइजेस लेते बटने लग गए इमीजिएटली आपका एक्ट शुरू हो जाता है मैं एक चीज तो इसीलिए हमने कहा कि भाई सरकार जो अभी तक डरती आई है वो नंगे को खुदा डरता है लेकिन भूखे को सरकार डरती है मैंने एक दावत किया था कि भाई आपको कपड़ा नहीं हुआ तो चलता लेकिन खाना नहीं हुआ तो सरकार गिर जाती है इसलिए दे आर वेरी वेरी अबाउट एक चीज जो मैं आ, आपके इस प्रोग्राम के माध्यम से एक जो नया डायमेंशन है वो मैं आपके सामने शेयर करना चाहता हूँ देखो एग्रीकल्चर के अंदर जो एक्सपोर्ट है ना उसमें सीड और प्लांटिंग मटेरियल का बहुत बड़ा एक्सपोर्ट इंडिया का हो सकता है लेकिन सीड को भी एसेंशियल कॉमोडिटी एक्ट के अंदर भारत सरकार ने रखा हुआ है अब ओनियन का सीड ओनियन का सीड देश से बहुत बड़ा ओनियन सीड एक्सपोर्ट होता है सरकार यहाँ ओनियन के जो प्रोड्यूस के ऊपर बैन लगाती है इसे ओनियन सीड के एक्सपोर्ट पर भी बैन लग जाता है 
राइस हाइब्रिड सीड का एक्सपोर्ट के ऊपर बैन लग जाता है कॉटन सीड के एक्सपोर्ट के ऊपर बैन लग जाता है तो मुझे लगता है कि जहां ये सीड और प्लांटिंग मटेरियल है इसको तो सरकार को एसेंशियल कॉमोडिटी एक्ट से जब तक बाहर नहीं निकालेगी तब तक सीड के अंदर इनोवेशन और प्लांटिंग मटेरियल के अंदर इनोवेशन और उसके ऊपर जो ट्रेड की जो प्रडिक्टेबिलिटी है वो नहीं आएगी इसके लिए सरकार को मेरा एक सुझाव है कि जो ये प्लांटिंग मटीरियल हो गया सीड अब ओनियन सीड का एक्सपोर्ट बैन लगा हुआ है अब आप देखिए अब सीड कितना वैल्यूबल वैल्यूबल मटेरियल है अब अगर वो जब जब उस पर बैन लगा आपका एक मार्केट है जैसे किनिया आपका मार्केट है बांग्लादेश मार्केट है या आपका श्रीलंका मार्केट है अगर जब आप सप्लाई नहीं करेंगे सीड तो कोई दूसरी कंट्री सप्लाई करेगी यहाँ से डच जाएगा या डच वाला अपना वहाँ मटीरियल भेजेगा तो जो ये जो बिजनेस डेवलपमेंट है वो भी सब खत्म हो जाता है तो मुझे ऐसे लगता है कि जैसे डॉक्टर माई ने कहा है सरकार हमेशा कंज्यूमर की तरफ झुकी हुई रहेगी इसमें कोई दो राय नहीं है बट हमें ये कंज्यूमर और फार्मर में बैलेंस ढूंढना पड़ेगा इसके लिए इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इज द की ये मेरा मानना है Absolutely. So thank you very much. Uh, I believe uh, I was trying to get uh, get in touch with Mr. Anil again. He has disconnected, so we wanted him to continue his arguments. So now he is not there with us. Uh, um, uh, I would now uh, request uh, Mr. Ravi Baratka ji for his uh, remarks uh, on this uh, session. Please unmute yourself, uh, Mr. Baratka. Unmute. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we both. Yes. It was wonderful to listen to all the panelists. And as expected, uh, Dr. A. K. Singh and Dr. Nilam Patel put forth the point of view of the government why these amendments are essential and how grossly they are going to contribute and how they will be proved as a game changer. And after that, as expected again, uh, Mr. Harish Damodaran, who is a hardcore journalist, uh, was uh, really critical about the. about all these amendments he shared uh, some of his uh, observations also and uh, we could not completely hear mr anil uh, danwar president of the shetkari sangathna but yes his uh, point of view is very clear and known that uh, that's the only uh, farmers organization which was in support of uh, these amendments and rather they have been uh, for a long time now pursuing that apmc be abolished which was their major demand so he was uh, obviously very happy but uh, the reason for which they were expecting that whether it happens or not the time will only tell us and yes bhagirath also uh, gave some uh, wonderful suggestions he also told us about the prices of jeera from where it comes from rajasthan and uh, some other observations which uh, are missed by a common public that how it is going to help bringing in more technology for the agriculture production Or bringing in more, uh, you know, uh, protein or uh, nutrient-rich uh, cereals or uh, agri products. But what I feel, you know, here I really remember and like what we have been doing in agrovision for the past one decade. See, ultimately, we all know that uh, if farms were needed, government has done something. It's not that this is going to change everything. Government's claim are like that. This is a game changer, but we some of us are confident, some of us are skeptical. But I think what is needed in agriculture is that uh, some courage to change the current situation. Because anything you are trying to do in agriculture, as we are saying it, is being a complicated subject. This is being concerned with uh, the large section of our population. More than fifty percent people are directly involved with it. and again the subject is a again a state matter so center cannot directly force them to implement it because we have seen even these amendments you know are not ratified by many of the state governments so what is required i think we need to experiment something with this field continuously because in the last 70 years though we are a predominantly an agriculture based uh, society but still our farmers are suffering is a reality so we need to change many of the things which have been there for the last past so many years and so any change i think should be welcomed should be heartily supported and if any additions corrections to be done here like uh, even in agro under the guidance of dr mai sir and uh, mr nitin gadkari we have been every year doing such expert panel discussion this year also we have conducted number of webinars and i think now also so many people should come together should discuss and i think uh, it's not only criticizing we have to put forth the right suggestions 
flight modules because this is one subject where the solutions may be different uh, for different regions it's a it's very vast and very complicated subject so there can't be one particular solution though there are certain policy decisions which are very uh, necessary like apmc for some state uh, they really have bad experience about this but for some state like you know punjab and some other state it really helps so again that needs to be seen so how it has to be implemented what kind of changes need to be brought but any change which government has ventured i think should be looked upon in a positive way if the time it proved otherwise and in the process whatever additions or uh, uh, suggestions we have we should be able to analyze through uh, uh, various channels available like today also we have uh, dr nandan patel with us uh, dr ak singh with us i'm sure he what are the concerns expressed here they will also take a proper cognizance of that and i think we uh, the agrovision or agri spectrum also or many uh, other people uh, other organizations like shetkar sangatna should bring together more such uh, uh, discussions involving more people and put, put forth their suggestions so that's whatever step government is trying to do trying to take is further uh, strengthened because yes uh, today immediately uh, that what number they are talking about fpo uh, for farmers uh, you know uh, uh, farmer producer organizations maybe 10000 or 100000 plus whatever the money they have kept in for giving them as a soft loan for building bringing more uh, agri infrastructure that may not be sufficient but let that be one good step see how it works and then maybe you know, we can uh, put them uh, give them more suggestions and maybe more practical one because what happens right now needs to be seen so on a positive note i think ki it's a one step taken by the government let us be with them and let's try to evolve it so that it is uh, more and more beneficial to the farmer because uh, in this particular time unless the farmer's economy is strengthened i don't think the indian economy can be strengthened or the dream of a uh, 5 trillion dollar economy can be achieved so all said and done we need to give more focus and more uh, and find more realistic solution to solve the farmers problem and for uh, this thing i think this kind of suggestions definitely helps or this kind of discussion definitely helps absolutely so thing i think i will like to uh, thank all the panelists for being with us today for sparing their time and putting their uh, good valuable suggestions and thanks to uh, dr sikmai and uh, the team in the back thank you so much thank you thank you shubhrathkar for your closing remarks so before we actually close i have a little announcement so our next webinar is actually a key lecture on rural development and transformation through silage by dr anil kakotkar he is a chairman of rajiv gandhi science and technology commission and is also former chairman atomic energy commission so this a keynote lecture would be held on 29th of october at 12 o'clock india time so the registration and joining link has already been posted in the chat window so those who are interested please uh, register and join us for the program so thank you once again everyone